A one man's trash is another man's treasure. The most troubling data I have seen in my two years of making videos. You either die the hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Wow. Doug Carter, I got some big numbers to share with you today because these We will experience the full power of the junk slab era. Six to nine. Right. And knowing the history of the hobby is very important. The junk slab sports card era is coming, Mini my friend. Hoops base PSA 9. Uh, in the middle here, you got the... Uh, and Panini. this grading expert is going to tell you why they graded the way they did. Influencers referring to the era that we're in as the junk slab era. We are going to talk about the junk slab era, which has been coined by many Junk slab era. Is it real? Is it happening? Today, I want to look inside the numbers and show some you... Some of these crazy junk slabs. Wrong about some of my previous comments about maybe the negatives of a junk slab era. A man's Let's trash is another man's treasure. So what is useless to one person may be valuable to another. Catch it. What a doozy uh, I got for you guys today. Uh, I'm sure... Card market. Um, and really what I believe you guys should be doing to prepare yourselves. Junk slab era that we are residing in and wanted to know whether it was good. Does that spell disaster for the hobby? I'll ask these guys they today. are suffering from too much success. They are receiving more PSA's cards. PSA's regular service reopening. We're talking about the junk wax era 2.0. Junk is slabs. It People are calling this the potential junk slab era, which is the fl you witness the mobility you've just lost from the outside. It's a dense... Ha! What's the matter, my dear? Don't you like your toys? It's all junk. Ha! Ah, eh! Well... Welcome, everyone. And I'm going to attempt to answer a question does grading even matter we're going to do a case study here with some data science a little bit of help to create that data set and i'll go through that later but the junk slab error does grading even matter This is going to be a case study on trading cards over the past six months. Uh, firstly, let's understand the impact of graded trading card population increases over a six month period. Secondly, the assist from gem rate on this analysis. Next, I'll go into a holistic view of our new and improved data set. And then we'll come to the results. Does grading even matter for price changes? And is there a difference by category? And finally, I won't leave you hanging. Uh, we'll do some insight-driven lessons and opportunities to further learn. So what's interesting about this one, uh, this is actually a question that was submitted by Hall of Stubs. That question was, does supply increase in population of each card at an individual rate impact value, i.e. a player wins a championship? Theoretically, it drives more grade submissions and or graded cards for sale. A little bit about Hall of Stubs. Uh, they're an IG account focusing on the collectible event ticket market. They use infographics to highlight data differences between tickets and cards, as well as produce IG reels with video of unique moments in tickets. So really good conversations in the chats with Tola Stubbs, and it's leading to this. Understanding the impact of graded trading cards. Population increases over a six-month period. 
So why is it important? Uh, graded card populations inform collectors' decisions on investments and trends. Understanding the impact of graded trading card population increases over a six-month time span can help collectors make informed decisions about their collections, investments, and overall market trends. The impact of graded trading card population increases is crucial for collectors for several reasons. Market analysis, value assessment, investment strategy, collection management, and authenticity verification. Graded card populations can provide valuable insights into market trends. A significant increase in graded card populations over six months may indicate a surge in demand. New collectors entering the market for a particular card becoming more popular. Changes in grading card populations can affect the value of a card. If the population of a certain card grade increases significantly, it may indicate that the card is less rare, potentially leading to a decrease in value. Conversely, a decrease in population might indicate increased rarity and potential higher value. So that's what we're going to do in this analysis, is see what it does for the market and value assessment in general. Here's the assist. So Gem Rate provides graded card reports focusing on trends over time. So to conduct this analysis, I received assistance from Ryan and Gem Rate. Like the card ladder team, the Gem Rate team supported by analysis of trading cards. So Ryan provided me with a population count from six months ago and the current date, enabling me to calculate the six month change in population and the ratio of graded cards to cards sold over that time span as well. Later on, we'll throw that into a statistical model. So now leveraging card ladder indexes and gem rate population data will lead to a robust data set we'll build our model on. Gem rate is commonly used for grading market share and increases. So over here, let's deepen our analysis by exploring the relationship between changes in population counts and price for constructing a propensity model. Let's review our data set. So by selecting the top cards from various card ladder indexes and utilizing their feature to examine historical price points, we can enhance our analysis by going back six months and evaluating the data to get to a higher level. In our data set is the graded score, the year card was released, a ratio of pop count change to six month sales. I'm um, defining that is pop count change over the past six months divided by the sales over the past six months. The idea here was to get a weighted portion of graded cards sold while also understanding there's no clear way to tie the graded card change to sold six months. Could be you know, older, previously graded cards moving. But the idea was like, this is our number that'll really tell us like, is supply outweighing demand? Change in pop counts over the past six months, our time period here for this analysis, we start in, and there's a typo on the slide, so I apologize for that, March 5th, 23 versus September 4th, 23. Oh, wait, no, that's not a typo. I did a typo in my talk. So the end date is March 5th, 24, and sep September 4th, 23 is the, um, the start date. I wrote that piece like a coder, sorry. Uh, pop calculation, pop count six months ago, current pop count, uh, sales over the past six months, 
total lifetime sales, base card. This is kind of like an indicator if it's a rookie card. So yes or no, the variation is considered base. Uh, lift, yes or no, a binary field. Did the card increase value over the past six months? This will be the value we are trying to predict later on. So this is our dependent variable in our propensity model. Card ladder index. So which card ladder index the card was pulled from. Um, I did mention that I would be grabbing the top cards from various card ladder indexes, how that's done. My approach was to filter it to graded cards and then sort by the total lifetime sales, grab the top 10. The idea there was I wanted the most sales activity to be able to conduct this analysis and not have to kick out a lot of cards, especially from the CL50 that did not meet this criteria of six months. So first off, we're going to visualize our data. Uh, visualizing our data set through scatter plots before running a propensity model, I feel, is crucial as it helps identify potential patterns or relationships between variable variables. So this visual inspection can guide the selection of variables, factors, and provide insights into the appropriateness of using a propensity model for analysis. So through Scott scatter plots on the screen, at a quick glance, value does not always increase with increased population counts. So I've looked at visually change in pop and sales lift, I'll read it left to right, number of sales and sales lift, and then total pop and sales list. Sales lift is going to be the vertical axis in all of these graphs. So what you would expect if this was like 100% correlation, like, hey, change in pop, and sales lift, the further we go to the right, value should go down. But that isn't always the case. You see some dots are higher than the previous dot. Same thing with number of sales and sales lift. You can see it's a little bit more, you know, elastic as there's a lot of sales lift, regardless of if there's more sales. Total pop and sales lift is showing a similar story, but closer to your um, far left graph. So addressing the elephant in the room, you know, cards have been declining. So the model will control for that as well. But on the screen, you see here's all the indexes. I put them to the past six months. Star Wars is increasing. Uh, entertainment, tennis, Culture 51. Of the nine indexes I'll include in here, only three of the card lacks. Card ladder indexes have shown a lift over the past six months. So let me double click into the CL50. Uh, I want you to focus on 44%. Here's why two of the cards in the CL50 did not have a sale of the past six months. So I had to kick those out. Uh, they were both vintage cards. Of those with a sale, right? 44% have shown an increase in value. So the entire index is down, but there are individual cards which will be thrown into the model that show value. So a little bit more on the indexes that I'm about to use. They're the ones I forecast monthly with the exception of the CL50. 
So Star Wars, Pokemon, Marvel, basketball, hockey, baseball, soccer, and football. Uh, there is no overlap of graded cards that I selected between the CL50 and the other categories. So there's no double dipping, double counting, putting an emphasis, extra emphasis, extra weight on cards just by not cleansing our data. So does the grading even matter for price changes? And is there a difference by category? In this section, I'm going to reveal the results of the propensity model uh, designed to predict the likelihood of a card increasing in value over six months, the model's most valuable output, is an importance chart, ranking graded card variables by their impact on value, whether positive or negative. This chart is instrumental in solving our question. You'll see why I love these charts so much. But high level, on average, data supports the junk wax error story narrative. Modern cards are more likely to depreciate. So an importance bar will break down all the variables in our model and add some weights and show the importance it is to predicting the likelihood. What I like about this as opposed to say a regression tree I don't have to go to two different visuals to understand if there's a negative or a positive impact and then their importance. So on the left, these are the variables that lower the price of a graded card over six months. To the right are the variables that increase value. And so this is for the CL50. The, the price of a graded card is primarily negatively affected by two factors over six months. The ratio of population change to total sales and the year the card was released. Cards are more likely to decrease in value if they were released more recently and if their sales significantly exceeded the number graded. So this is the ultra modern jump slab era support story. To the right, positively affecting it, our top two ones are graded score, and if it's a rookie card, and then graded card index category being in there, this wasn't only, sorry, it wasn't only the CL50. This one I combined everyone. So CL50 is in there as well as your individuals. That's why your category is showing importance. So let us know there's some differences. Graded cards are likely to increase in value over the next six months if they have high graded scores. So eventually or essentially what this is saying that, hey, an increase in graded score is driving an increase in value, helping our predictor, and so it makes it more likely. Which often indicate rookie cards. That's the base card indicator. Different trading card categories show varying behaviors in response to these factors, which will be explored further in the next section. I'm going to break this section out by, you know, where graded pop increases don't matter. And the next section will be like, well, here they are. So try to give two sides of the argument with data. So grading and pop count increases doesn't, does not matter. And here's why this section highlights trading card categories where grading is less influential as increases in pop count positively impact card prices over six months. 
The results may surprise some collectors, while others may find them familiar. The goal is to offer insights that bolster your views on grading and pot counts. We will see two categories are actually identical when it comes to impact. So here is our first one where I threw this in that um, that grading doesn't matter, pops don't matter, uh, just because they weren't that significant in the model, those changes on the negative side. Um, actually, scores and years released by far outweighed any of the change metrics. So hockey cards, population count changes slightly impact. Uh, vintage cards significantly affect value. So top left are bar charts. You can see graded score and year card was released. Actually, negative effect. So the higher the score, the less the value is likely to go up, which is interesting. Uh, you'll see that for most of these categories where there's a very distinct divide between vintage and modern cards. The positive impacts is base card, so is the rookie card. Actually, the total lifetime sales and sales over the past six months. So this is a case where sales are increasing and value is still increasing. Sales as in number of graded cards sold. So the category deep dive begins with hockey cards where vintage cards show a positive impact on six month value based on the rookie card indicator and the recency of release. Higher graded scores are less likely to increase the value of graded hockey cards over the next six months. On the bottom right, let's talk about how this, the card selected, what their share looks like, right? <coughs> Sorry about that, a little cough attack. So hockey cards exhibit the widest range of releases comparing against the other indexes you'll see later. Spanning eight years with 60% of the share attribution to graded cards released before 2016, the analysis primary includes PSA 10 cards, but also goes as low as PSA 6. As you can see in the um, I graph to the right, 50% uh, of all the cards selected were a PSA 10. Now a little bit about the model's accuracy. So controlling for all these factors led to a 67% accuracy in predicting if a graded hockey card increased in value over six months. Uh, typically, a machine learning model, you go to market in about 60% to 65% range. So this model you would actually use to develop a differential equation and predict the likelihood of individual card values. So big round of applause, pats on the backs. We did it. We could actually now predict individual card values. All it takes is some data assists. Soccer cards. So soccer card values Top count less crucial, and vintage trumps modern sets. So similar to the hockey cards, right? You see year card was released is pretty high. It's actually the top influencer here. Now where it differentiates itself from 
graded score is positive effect graded score. And so compared to hockey cards. And also on the top influencer is ratio of pop count changes to six month sales. So as for soccer cards, pop count takes a back seat, increases actually signal future value gains. You can also see sales over the past six months, change in pop counts over the past six months and total lifetime sales, all positive influences. So this trend mirrors hockey vintage versus modern narrative, where card release year reigns supreme and value fluctuations driving a negative impact in the more recent the set is. The share by grade is a 50-50 split of what was included, uh, PSA 10 and PSA 9. 40%, let's focus on 40%, Mbappe is nearly half of the graded cards used for this analysis based on the top card souls. None of his cards have increased in value over the past six months. Share by release, 2014 is 50%. So the trio of Ronaldo, Messi, and Neymar Jr. comprises half of the selected cards. All of them happen to be in 2014. Except for Neymar, the 2014 cards are evenly divided between PSA 9s and PSA 10s. On to basketball identical to soccer basketball cards pop pop count trend old value and modern depreciations depreciates so here's where you also see this in the next section this is not an error on the screen these bar charts are speaking to basketball the impact is identical so this is another case where, you know, pop counts increases and it's a positive effect. Sales increases, positive effect. Sales of items, cards sold. But let's go ahead and talk about the data for a section. Michael Jordan dominates sales with two thirds of his cards increasing in value. The analysis focuses heavily on modern releases with 70% from 2018 and onwards. Split's a little different. Uh, you have PSA 8 creeping in there, an almost identical split to soccer. So where they do differentiate is the share of year released. Uh, let's focus on 60%. So the majority of basketball cards have shown an increase in value over the last six months. So this supports pop count, especially the increases having minimal impact. Should also be noted that basketball is in season during this analysis. And we're gonna wrap up this section with baseball cards. So baseball card pop counts boost value. Vintage also trumps modern, and high grades reduce value. Looks pretty similar to hockey cards, except some variables will shift in importance. Mark this up to another supporting point for pop count increases. Doesn't always matter. For baseball cards, pop count increases actually correlate with value gains. This trend, like others, underscores a vintage versus modern dynamic, where high graded scores negatively impact modern values. The top 10 most sold baseball graded cards show a unique distribution, with 1989 and 2020 being the top two years released shares each combining 40% and 30% of the share. 
PSA 10s make up half of the graded card selected for this analysis. And we go as far as PSA 8s. 40% Ken Griffey Jr. is 40% of the baseball cards included in this analysis. The remaining 10, is, sorry, the remaining 60% is evenly distributed amongst players. So no one has more share than the others. But Ken Griffey, his star guard, his star rookie, um, is driving a lot of the value. I believe another Griffey card was in there as well that wasn't the star card. Now we're going to give the counterpoint based off of these categories. You'll see it's a lot, a lot of non-sport and TCG. It says grading and pop count increases does. It does matter. And here's why. So this section, I'm going to focus on trading cards where grading plays a significant role as increases in pop counts lead to lower card prices over six months. The results may be unexpected to some collectors, while others may find them consistent with their experiences. Essentially, what I'm trying to do is share this data in a way for a broader audience. Bear with me if you know you already know this information. You already know it. You know here is the objective, which is to provide insights that reinforce the importance of grading and pop counts. So more statistical rigor and support to if you do think it matters. Interestingly, again, two categories will show identical impacts. So first off, we're going to start with football cards, the lone sports card in this section. Football cards highlight pop count significant impact on value. Actually, Almost every variable showed a negative impact for football cards. Only one variable was a negative, but it actually showed no impact. And that was the indicator for rookie cards or base cards. Football cards kick off our analysis supporting the notion pop counts mattered most. Nearly every variable negatively impacts football cards, prices over six months, with the pop count changes to sales ratio driving the biggest decrease, in indicating excessive graded supply compared to demand. Secondly, graded score, and then year the card was released. Let's talk a little bit about the cards included for this analysis. The football cards in this analysis span six release years, with 80% released before 1990 indicating a focus on vintage cards. Uh, PSA 8s are most prevalent, comprising 50% of the graded cards, further highlighting the vintage preference. You can see the um, share by year and share by grade on the screen in bar charts and pie charts. 25%. Barry Sanders is 25% of the six-month sales total, followed next by Josh Allen at 21%. So when you're thinking about, okay, which players are driving these numbers, Barry Sanders and Josh Allen. Now on to Pokemon. Pokemon cards value decline linked to high grades, grading trends, and recency. Uh, I do want to call out 63% number and not only Charizard. So the majority of cards in this analysis feature Charizard, right? As in any TCG analysis for Pokemon is going to be. He's 63% of the population. But this analysis also expands to Mew and Umbreon. So we're just not talking about Charizard here. Uh, this analysis focuses 
on Pokemon cards, and it's our only TCG included in this analysis. And it's really going to highlight their high print runs. The chances of a Pokemon card depreciating over six months are strongly linked to a higher grade. Uh, grading trends surpassing demand and the recentness of these sets release. So graded score is your top indicator for negative impact ratio of pop count to sales count the years the card was released and sales over the past six months gets a nice indicator as well. So PSA 10s represent 37% of the annualized, sorry, of the an, analyzed Pokemon cards, with Charizard accounting for 53% of those. Mew, with no grades higher than 8, makes up 73% of the PSA 9s analyzed. The volume of Pokemon cards sold tends to skew towards the base set, a trend not limited to this analysis. So 52%, Charizard is actually 52% of the six month sales total, followed next by Mew at 29%. So you can see your share by grade. It's actually not too bad of a mix. We go all the way down to PSA 7. Now here's where Identical Impact again comes into play. Identical to Pokemon cards, Marvel card values, linked to grade, demand, and recency. Uh, plus 10. So let's talk about this. This might be one of those facts that might be a little shocking, right? So last time we talked about not only Charizard, this one's going to be not only Spider-Man. So both Wolverine and Stan Lee have a larger share, plus 10 percentage points than Spider-Man of the total sold population, the top 10 sales leaders for Marvel cards. Um, the Marvel cards mirror Pokemon cards in their ranking of importance factors. Marvel cards' likelihood of depreciating over six months hinges on a higher grade, grading trends outpacing demand, and the recentness of the set's release. That's kind of, you can throw it out here, right? So that's what I'm saying, like, take that with a grain of salt. Since all the cards selected was from 90 Impel. So you can really just focus on the uh, count changes, grade score, and your sales over the past six months. Uh, Marvel cards in this analysis 80% of the cards included increased in value over six months. Surprisingly, the cards that decreased in value were both PSA 10s. Now we move on to Star Wars. So base cards indicate lower value, pop count and sales matters. Here we do see a positive impact, at least when it comes to sales over the past six months. Really good distribution by grade that's included in this analysis. Uh, share by year released, not that great of a breakout. So mostly this is talking to that 77 top set. Junk Lab era, does grading cards even matter? The insight driven lessons. Having explored nine card ladder indexes, top graded card sales by sales, uh, volume, the pop count data provided by gem memory, and the propensity model results for likelihood of an individual graded card increasing value over six months we can make supporting statements around the junk slab era. Leveraging data science and advanced analytics, we've gone beyond simply looking at market share of grading and lifts. We've empowered our learnings. But does, does grading even matter? Here was the journey. The first stop 
you know, we got data supports, junk wax error, sorry. Modern cards more likely to depreciate. Second stop, hold on, maybe grading. Doesn't matter. And then finally, oh wait, for these ones it does. On the screen are some recommendations. Focus on vintage cards. Consider diversification. Be cautious with modern cards. Stay informed. If you want more, go to my website, pancakebreakfaststats.com. Always great to talk to you. Have a wonderful day and keep on grading or stop grading. I think it really depends on what you are collecting. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Yeah.